Hey guys, want to learn how to do a crackled granite finish? Stay tuned and enjoy the video. I have a very special guest from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, he, uh, his name is Brett Cunningham. Um, been doing countertops for around 11 years. I mean, it's, it's a cool look, what we're gonna do tonight. It's a, it's a granite look. I don't think you guys have really seen it. We're using acrylic, right? Right, Real, cool. we're using acrylics and dispersion colors. Okay, so we're gonna start off with stone coat countertop, and instead of our regular three ounces per square foot, we're gonna do two ounces per square foot, right. and he's gonna pull it a little bit tighter. So we're gonna be a little bit thinner on the surface. And we're not gonna use a trial, he's gonna use a Bondo spreader, flat edge, so that he can pull it pretty tight. All right, so you've poured about half? Yeah, about a half. Okay. Let's get it on there. Now when I say you pull it tight, what I'm telling you guys is we just, he pulls it with that Bondo spreader so that he just leaves a little bit of that material it's on more, the surface. More or less just a skim coat. That's all it is. Not very thin, thick at all, real thin. All right, all right, cool beans. You ready to go? All right, ready? you need a torch or anything? Yeah, we can torch it. Okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna torch out the bubbles. Very lightly. Okay guys, some of you may have seen this little drop right here. So that was a little boo-boo that we had before we started, but we're not worried about it because it's gonna be a perfect piece You'll never into see the it. finish. <laughs> You'll never see it. Okay, so now what are we doing? We're gonna take our acrylics and our dispersion colors and we're just gonna spritz them on top of the epoxy. We're not gonna do a real thick coat, it's just a nice covering. So we're gonna link the products that we're using in the description. So it's very random. You're not trying to get any kind of pattern, no, correct? No, you're just putting it on there. I mean, you can do veinage. And right. Different looks you want to do. I mean, it's totally a custom look. If you wanted to do a vein of white down the middle, you know, and just mm -hmm. put some white on there. Okay. Now white. this is dispersion mixed with water, correct? Right. So this is water going over the top of the epoxy. Correct. Now that is something I have never done. So you're really not thinking too much, are you? You're no just like, no. yeah, so don't be like me and overthink it, right? Mm -hmm. Just go after it. All right. Your edges, because it's a liquid, it's gonna run off. Okay. So you gotta probably come back, you know, on a kitchen counter, you're an inch and a half thick. You're gonna have to probably come back and touch it up. Okay. Because it's just gonna run, it's a liquid. All right. Now this looks really cool. Mm-hmm, it's starting to do it already. It's a, yeah. it's a reaction between the epoxy and the dispersions that causes the crackle effect. Okay. And you ain't gonna see the crackle effect till tomorrow. Right, it's right, just, yeah, so this has to sit overnight. Right. Okay. When I come back into a house in the morning, from the point I left the day before to the time I come in the morning, that counter's changed. From okay, What Absolutely. it looked like when I was there. All right, so again, guys, you cannot judge this right now, okay, because tomorrow is when the beautiful effects, we'll right. see that. Now that, were, that was, what color was this? That is called caramel. Caramel, okay, and then now we're coming. With white linen. White linen, okay. Just give it a little mist. We already did the veinage with it. This bottle don't spray. My bottle's giving you a hard time? It's working hard, yeah. I'm just pressing it across the top of it. And see, I like these dots like you're getting. Yeah, I really like that. So can you get too much water? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, I mean, I'm about right where I want to be right now. I don't want to go okay. more. All you right. make puddles, and it's just going to be a puddle the next morning. Okay, Not going gotcha. To be a, All right, so no puddles. No. No puddles. You don't want to do a, a lot of a colorant on it. All right. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. I don't know if this would even work. What if you came over now and fogged it with spray paint? What would it do? You don't never know? done it. You never done it? I'm not done, but yeah. Right, that's cool. Yeah. I just was wondering. We could. Yeah. Let's put some mica on it and then try that. Some mica in the alcohol? I gotta, I gotta put the mica on. No, oh, I, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm gonna take some of these micas. I like to start off with black. It doesn't matter what color you start with. And these are big flaked mica powders, or mica flakes, they're Flake. not actually a powder. And then to do your edges, I always start on the edges. Oh, there we go. On an inch and a half thick countertop. 
So do you ever get lightheaded and pass out? No, because I used to I used to sit there and throw them on there, and I'm yeah. wasting so many. Yeah. Put them in your hand and blow them on. Then you get some that come on the top too. Yeah. Please. Oh wow. Okay. Cool. So this is really a natural look because there's no way you can do a pattern See like this. See how the two flow together and make yeah. color. Yeah. That looks really cool. You just sprinkle them on the top. The more the merrier. I like putting a lot of them on. It gives it a, a stone look, stone face look. And you can come in with all different color micas, right? Yes. You can yes. come in with There's any kind of color you want. So many different colors you can use, anything you want. All right, I'm going to put, what color is this? Looks like a coppery, bronzy color. Yep. Probably okay, and you're respray. oh, you're respraying over the top. Just a little bit. Okay. That was a little light on color. I didn't like it. Okay. And then tomorrow when we come in, this is going to all crackle. It's not going to look solid like it looks right now. Deposit look. <clears throat> These mica flakes aren't going to sit flat. So right. Gonna, some of them are going to land up on their edge. Yep. You're going to have to fix that tomorrow. Okay, so now let me ask you a question. I know when I use flakes, they'll lay down some straight up, some to the side, so once it gets, uh, your epoxy hardens up, mm -hmm. you can feel it. Yeah. And then yeah. we address that with our yes. flood coat, because our flood, or do you sand them? Yes. Okay, so you're gonna come in and sand them, and then you're gonna flood coat. I take a Dremel tool with a little tiny stone on the end, and okay. I go across my hand and I'll feel where they're okay. at. Okay, and, and get them. them. Okay, yeah. cool. Or you can just cover them up with flood coat. You can already see how it's doing what it's doing right here in this. Color. Yeah, I mean it's already starting to kind of really. And that's a reaction from the colors. Yeah. And the epoxy. Yeah. And it's going to do a crackle look all the way across. Yeah. My son used to help me do these. Mm -hmm. And Dad, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Yeah. Looks good. So actually, we could leave it like this, and this would be a finish all on its own, right? <laughs> but Rhonda doesn't want to do that. But Rhonda we're going to go to the next, next step. step. <laughs> that's right. Let's try it. I've never done it. I don't see why it won't work. Doing the, yeah. the spray paint? Yeah. Let's do one end of it. That way we'll, or like kind of just do just little do spots white, of it. White huh? or black? Uh, what do you think? Black. Black? Let's try black. All right, let's do that'll, black. That'll granify it more. Like my handy dandy paint spinner. So now I'm taking black gloss Rust-Oleum paint. I'm gonna fog it really lightly, and then I'm gonna hit it with isopropyl alcohol, 91%. Right here where it's kinda light right there, I'm gonna do it right there. So now we're gonna come in with clay mica powder mixed with isopropyl alcohol, and I'm gonna add a little bit more black right here. Just gonna spritz it. And then we're gonna spritz it. Very neat. And tomorrow it's going to look totally different than today. It's yeah. going to set up overnight and it's going to do the crackle effect overnight. So what you see now is not what you're going to have in the morning. Okay, so we're, we don't work well together because we like to play too much. <laughs> we don't know when to stop. So I found these big gold flakes that are really large, but now we're going to go add these on there. Yeah. So how are we going to do that? Just very randomly? Just, yeah, just random. I just sprinkle. Okay. Just. So this is going to be, re oh wow, I really like those because it just kind of catches right, the light right. ever so often. Exactly. Very cool. Now what are we going to do? Now we're going to use some fine glitter. And what that does is it gives it that resemblance of stone. You're walking down the nature trail and you look at that rock sitting over there and it kind of glistens and sparkles at you. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add some glisten and sparkle. No, put All some right. Bling. Got some bling. bling so on this one, we're using the Stone Coat countertop. Their new glitter. It's a fine glitter, ultra fine glitter, and uh, I really like it because it doesn't sink. It stays suspended in mm -hmm. your epoxy when you use it. So it's really good. It's a little bigger than the Diamond Dust. Super super fine. A lot of fun. All right, so what we'll do is we'll let this sit overnight. In the morning, we'll come back. We will sand wherever we need to sand. Yep. And then we're gonna put a flood coat. All right, so see you in the morning. Okay, guys, we've let it sit overnight. The water has evaporated out and has caused the acrylic 
that's on the surface to actually crack and give us this really unique finish. Now, what you need to understand when you do this, this is unpredictable. We can think about how it's gonna turn out, but we don't know exactly how the finish is gonna turn out. Every single time, it's gonna, we're gonna crack with different uh, variations right. and different patterns. So understand that this is functional art. It's not something that can be recreated exactly every single time. So em embrace those imperfections, embrace the fact that it's going to be different every single time and then actually enjoy it. That's what makes it fun. So what's our next step, Brett? The next step what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my hand and I rub it over the surface. What happens is your micas will turn up on edge and land on edge and not flat. And so therefore you'll get an uneven, you'll have a bump. Right, okay. When you pour your flood coat. You can feel it when you run your exactly. hands across right. it. Right. Okay. Right here you can feel some. Yep, okay. <clears throat> what I do then is I'll take a Dremel and I'll lightly hit it with a Dremel and rub those, just get them down flatter than what they are so they're, when I why, put my flood coat. Why uh, can't I just sand the whole top? We'll scratch the color coat and you will have a mess. Good, Don't all right, so we're not gonna run a uh, sander over the entire nice. surface before we pour our flood coat. We're just gonna hit individually wherever we feel those highs. Just a Dremel tool. Um, Kenny didn't have the stone that I normally use. I usually use like a little pointed stone and that way you can get that point just into that area that you want to do your grinding on. I'm using a sanding disc. It's gonna do the same thing. I'll get the same result. Well, I guess, Kenny, you're gonna have to buy me something else. <laughs> After you have your flood coat on and you, then you happen to see one, then you could still use this mm -hmm. and then do, do your UTC on top. Right, there mm -hmm. you go. The UTC mm -hmm. is the ultimate top coat. So if you're gonna put a matte finish, which what that's what we're gonna do on here. Um, if you do have a few imperfections that the color coat doesn't cover up, say it sticks up just a little bit, um, we'll sand it down again. And then when we put that uh, ultimate top coat, it's gonna be perfectly flat. All right, so because we, we don't have to worry about this being perfectly flat because the, cut, the top coat uh, or our flood coat is really gonna cover up a lot of right. that, those highs. Right. Cool. Okay, so now it's time for the flood coat. Same product, stone coat <clears throat> countertop. And we added a tiny bit of diamond dust just to give it a little bit of bling. And I mean a tiny bit because we don't want the diamond dust to take over the finish. Now, we have a new, a new fun tool. Instead of using uh, the metal trial, 1 8 uh, by 1 8 inch square notch trial, we're gonna use the new trials that Erica and Jeff from Artist to Death have developed. Really cool, I'll have these available on my website pretty quick. But they're also a 1 8 inch notch trial, but it's very easy to hold, so when I go down on the surface, I'm not gonna get my hands dirty, and it's gonna make it really easy to spread out this material. So, now we are really big about using our hands, but I really wanted to bring this to you guys and let you see it. Very lightweight, very fun to use. That's gonna dry and it's gonna peel right off of here. So, look for these on my website pretty soon. Unlike most of the time, you can just run that trial across there. Right. We wanna be a little more careful because we don't wanna pull those micas up, right? Right, and I okay. try to let it float, Yep. kind of. I mean, I'm not pushing down real hard on it. Right. Wow, that flood coat really does bring out the depth in this. Yep. Holy cow. So I'm a big fan of using my hands because I, I like to be able to take my fingers and as I roll the material over the edge, I'm able to hold it and make sure that that epoxy gets underneath and causes that uh, edge to really be nice and not have any kind of surface tension. Okay, so on a finish where we have uh, texture, unevenness, which is what we have using this mica. We have a lot of highs and a lot of lows. We're gonna use four ounces per square foot instead of three ounces per square foot, and that's gonna give us a little bit extra material 
to make sure that we cover all of those highs and those lows. So that's a pro tip. Use four ounces instead of three ounces per square foot. One of my concerns, Brett, is that my edges are really thin because that's what happens when you pour epoxy. Yep. Your edges are very thin because epoxy is fluid and it wants to run down and it wants to be very thin on the edges. Yep. How do you address that? We'll put a minimum of two coats of epoxy on our edges and possibly three. Um, I usually try to get to the third coat on my edges. Okay, so, so you do that the same day? Yes. Okay, yes. so yes. you'll go in first and maybe have somebody just apply it to the edges? Yep, and as I'm putting the flood coat on, he's coming behind or whatever, vice versa. He does the edges, I do the flood coat. And we go across the whole countertop and then after the flood coat's all done, then he'll come back behind gotcha. and do the edges again. And so you're building up those edges? I'm building up that edge. Okay, yep. so what I, I, I like to do also, and it does add an extra day, but if you have the time and you're really concerned about those edges and you want ultra smooth edges, yep. is what you can do is day one, before we pour the flood coat, I'll mix up just enough epoxy to do my edges. So I'll measure my linear footage, figure out how much I need. I'll come in with just the clear and I'll only do my edges. I'm not really worried about it being uneven on the top because I know I'm gonna come in with a flood coat. So I'll run my hands and I will make the edges build up. So basically I'm putting one coat on my edge. The next day, or if I do it in the morning, by that late evening, I can come over with my flood coat because my edges can be a little tacky. It's okay. You don't want them stringy, but if they're a little bit tacky, that's fine. Then when I pour my flood coat, any unevenness that's here on the surface is going to be covered up anyway by my flood coat. So now I have two full coats of epoxy on my edges to make sure that uh, they're smooth. Mm -hmm. Let's say we even had a little bit more roughness than what we wanted, and I know that I'm gonna put an ultimate top coat finish on here, I'll mix up again just enough material for my edges, I'll give it a third coat. Yep. Third can. coat, now I'm gonna, a little bit, I'm gonna be a little uneven on the top, but that's okay because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and sand it before I put my UTC. Right. right. When I put my UTC, then I'm right. gonna be good. Now I've got three levels, three big good levels mm -hmm. of epoxy on my edges. So that's another way that you can address your edges if you really wanna make sure that you build up those edges. Another way I can do my edges too is I'll take a sanding, a fine sanding pad mm -hmm. and I'll hit them edges and just sand them down. Sand lightly. them down a little bit more. I've already got my clears been over. Yep. And then I'll put my ultimate top coat over top. There you go, there you done. go. So yeah. you, you could get away with two coats. Right, so it just depends on how much you really wanna build up those edges and how thick that you want that epoxy right. on those edges. Right. All right, this is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it looks like a, a, I mean, a piece of granite. This is gorgeous. <clears throat> it's a neat look. It is very, very cool. And I, I, that's about the only way. I've never really seen these cracks any other way but right. the way and that you did it. And it ain't the epoxy cracking. It's the colors right. that are doing it. It's not exactly. the epoxy Exactly. It's not cracking. the epoxy. It's the reaction of the water right. is evaporating. You have that acrylic colorant. So as it's drying and the water uh, evaporates evaporating, that's color. what's causing the cracking. Yep. So in this actual video, we used a product from iCoat. It is an acrylic dispersion. So I have a link on my website as well for acrylic colors, artistic painting studio. You can also get the mica flakes there. Great array of colors. I love the product. Jennifer Ferguson is a personal friend of mine and I highly recommend the products on her website. Reach out to her if you have any questions. She's an amazing, amazing artist. So all you do with these acrylic additives is mix them with water. And then what happens is as that water evaporates, it just leaves the color and causes that crackle effect. And that's how we get this beautiful finish. Okay guys, I am so excited. This project came out amazing. We went ahead and put the ultimate top coat. We rolled it on. 
let it sit overnight, and the finish is absolutely stunning. It takes that plastic high shine, high gloss away. It gives a beautiful satin finish that just makes this granite look real. So the ultimate top coat is available on my website along with uh, roller kits. I highly recommend the microfiber rollers. They work amazing. Check out the website, rk3designs.com. Okay, well, we did it. This is awesome. You like this? I like it. Did you have fun? I had fun. All right. It's been a good time. Long trip from Wisconsin. Yes, it was. All right. <laughs> okay, guys, if you found value in this video, let <laughs> us know. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. We really do love your comments when you leave us feedback, so make sure to do that. Maybe what colors would you do? Would you maybe have put a few more veins in here? Would you use a different color mica? Let me know. And also, all of these products we will have linked in the description. The stone coat products are available on my website, rk3designs.com. So check that out. Um, also, we have an online course. If you're interested in learning all of this online, check out our course online, epoxypro.com. We also have hands-on classes. We love hands-on classes. We love meeting our people and we have a really fun time. Yes, so it is fun. <laughs> so you're first hand. Um, so check out our website for all of the scheduling, booking, and you can put a deposit down and hold your class. I'm gonna test you now. What do I always say? You got this? I say, don't be scared, move forward, yep. and be creative.